everyone. So how's the Josh this Sunday morning? Lovely to hear that. What a wonderful idea the TED is. First of all, we must salute the author who discovered the TED in this form. And let us try and enrich the TED objective, which is to bring forth ideas worth spreading. It is my privilege today, as I share some ideas and examples with you. My topic is, little initiatives make big difference. We've often heard this from our seniors, teachers, and parents. And they say it with great conviction. But why this prefix little? Is it so that big initiatives are not important? Let me cite a small example of a little initiative. So when senior directors of a big corporate house were discussing crucial issues relating to the company's growth and marketing strategies, a latecomer director, yes, directors can be latecomers too, was still struggling on some floor to find the board room where the meeting is taking place. So a junior functionary of the same company observed this well-dressed, confused, sweating, panting guy and got an idea from the entire chaos. Of course, he guided him to the right room first. And then a couple of days later, he devised user-friendly signages for different sections and departments of the building. How simple an initiative leading to a big permanent facility for future visitors. Just imagine the precious man hours that would have been wasted in the absence of this little initiative. I move on to cite another small example. I'm sure you would have heard that chimpanzees and humans share about 98% of their DNA. But what amazes me most is which is that 2% which chimpanzees have missed out on. And how lucky we are to have escaped from being born as chimpanzees by a little margin of just 2%. Shouldn't we be thanking the nature for this initiative? Taking little initiatives should not be seen as a burden. They don't require too much of an effort. In fact, they need not even be earth-shaking events. Making a small beginning is always easy. It requires little time, little effort, and minimal investment. In fact, what is important is the underlying cause that you seek to address and how it is going to impact the people or the target section. Little initiatives start from your personal nature and determined effort. The most important part of our hypothesis that little initiatives make big difference is the individual self. Because when an initiative is to be taken, it is I and you which come first. There are doubts and other considerations as well which are important, but they come much later, much, much later. You could easily start a new activity, or you could be a little bold, and start by, say, picking up littered stuff from the corridors of your campus. You could even help straighten a tilted young plant, or you could replace a toppled flower pot. And believe me, dear friends, you will not be alone in this endeavor. Several fence-sitters will join you soon and would wonder as to why it didn't strike them first. Sure, you would have heard of plogging. So plogging is a form of jogging, where you replace the J of jogging with PL, and it becomes plogging, P-L-O-G-G-I-N-G. -G -G. So plogging started in 2016 in Sweden, and it comes from the Swedish word called plocka up, which means to pick up. It was started as a very small initiative by a group of joggers who combined the activity of jogging with the activity of picking up of trash on the jogging route. And you would be surprised, I'm sure most of you would know, that blogging has already become a big movement. It has spread to several countries and has become a big movement towards cleaner environment. And there's good news for all of us. Blogging is coming to our own dear country on the 2nd of October this year in the form of India Plog Run. 
It is being organized in 50 cities across 500 locations. I'm sure some of us will run and blog and make a difference to our individual self and to our country. A common handicap which I feel most of the students, especially in our country, face is the difficulty in speaking fluent English. I too have faced this handicap and it took me several years to overcome it. Now we need to understand that apart from knowing the local language and the national language, of course, speaking English fluently is very important. Most of the work in our country, even today, and also higher education happens through English. It could be possible for us, for members of small groups, for friends, to take a pledge where they would speak to each other only in English. This small campaign can then be rolled over into a full-fledged movement, which can be taken across to different classes and indeed to different colleges and universities. A website page or a Facebook page could be devoted to it, which would soon receive plenty of ideas and suggestions to enhance this skill. So as I talk about student days, I want to share a personal experience with you. When I was in college, I, was, I used to stay in a hostel and I used to detest hostel food. So one day I was sitting in class, getting bored from the lecture and perpetually hungry that I always was, I smelt the aroma of someone's tiffin. So I turned around and I saw this girl who was generous enough to read my face, to read my hunger pangs and offered her tiffin to me. I grabbed it. The next day, the same girl walks up to me and offers her lunch packet. I sheepishly decline because I don't want her to go empty stomach again. To this, to this she says that her mother had sent this lunch packet for me exclusively. I was thrilled and I thanked her. But to my surprise, this was only the beginning of a lifelong journey. Her mother sent lunch packets for me every single day for the next four years of my college. And when I got the chance to meet auntie, only after three years for the first time, I thanked her with folded hands, conveyed my gratitude. I can never forget what she said. She gave me a big smile and she said, Beta, I packed lunches for three of my children and for my husband. You are just an addition. I was speechless, I was amazed, I didn't know what to say to her. Her initiative, which was perhaps so little to her, made a big difference in building a lifelong, mutually caring relationship. And it taught me the greatest lesson, which is sharing has no limits. Most of you are students. You too can make some change somewhere to make the lives of others a little easier. You can identify an area that interests you and undertake an activity, say maybe once in a week on Sundays when you're a little free, you could call your group the Sunday Brave Hearts or with some other exciting name. Some of the areas that could be possibly chosen from could be responsible use of water, avoiding food wastage. We could start with ourselves and begin by taking smaller helpings. Organization, or organizing blood and organ donation campaigns. And if you want to trouble your lazy friends, you can organize yoga and fitness sessions for them and make them compulsory. Sure, the law students would have thought about pro bono. So as you grow in your careers, devoting just a little bit of your time, say 10% only, would not be too much of an effort, but it would go a long way in helping the less privileged and their families. And in turn, it will be an additional learning and experience gain for you. Little initiatives taken particularly to help the needy and the marginalized sow seeds of lasting institutions, whereby future generations live a more meaningful and fulfilling life. And here comes the best part. It makes a big difference to the doer too, as he or she receives instant enrichment and joy. As wise people say, by helping others, we help ourselves. 
There are millions of examples of little initiatives in circulation which have literally built empires of social and material wealth. I'm sure you would have heard of the concept of midday meals in government schools. So our country's proud program, the midday meal program, is the world's largest school nutrition program. But it had a very humble beginning. It was started by a young IS officer in some place in Tamil Nadu. He observed that the attendance level of children in rural areas, schools of villages, was very low. It struck to him to introduce simple, freshly cooked, nutritious meals and serve them during school hours. It was observed with this little initiative, there was tremendous improvement in not only the attendance, but also the enrollment ratios. This program became such a hit that first it was replicated in all the schools of Tamil Nadu, and then it spread to each and every government school of the country. It is thanks to Midday Meal today that our future leaders, our little children, are healthier and stronger and better prepared to lead the country. I also wish to share my personal journey with you. I had just moved from the Punjab cadre to the cadre of Uttar Pradesh. And my first posting was SDM Noida, which is officially called as Gautam Budnagar. Now in those days, illegal dredging of sand was rampant. There were literally convoys of tractors and trolleys carrying sand, they would appear from nowhere as the sun would set and they would start moving in all directions. This was causing huge loss to the state revenues as well as irreparable damage to the environment. And these convoys of tractors and trolleys had a unique speciality. They were guarded by high-end SUVs carrying armed men. Chasing or interrupting them was something totally unthinkable. So in this scenario, a five foot, three inch girl, along with her one PSO, two home guards, and one driver, dared to stop the sand mafia. So my official vehicle, which was a Tata Sumo, had a speciality too. It was more than 10 years old, and the maximum speed it could attain was 60 kilometers an hour. My driver, on top of that, was 59 and a half years old, on the verge of retirement, and suffering from cataract. He couldn't see clearly in the night. So I had to wait for the night to get over, for the sun rays to come up at 3 a.m., 4 a.m. in the morning, and start with my raids. That was my single point strategy. I conducted raids in the wee hours of the morning, there were all possible efforts to stop me. I tried to seize the trucks, which were in the very end of the convoy, which, were, which had somehow lost touch with the base and which were rushing to catch up. So I could seize, by the end of the day, waiting the entire night, I could seize only about five to 10 trucks, whereas there were hundreds of them sneaking away every day. Everything was done to stop me. I was threatened and I was attacked, but I did not budge. And then finally, I was removed. But my removal, to my surprise, created a big movement in the entire country. The nation stood up and raised its voice against illegal sand mining happening anywhere in the country, not only in Noida. This resulted in the environmental laws and their implementation becoming stricter. There was significant reduction in the sand mafia business. Indeed, it went beyond. Little initiatives taken by young officers all over the country started getting recognized. And there was another bigger impact to my small initiative. The central government issued modifications to our rules providing for greater protection to officers against arbitrary disciplinary action. As I come close to wrap up my talk, I wish to underline the lessons I have learned and relearned during my journey of life. First of all, it is very important 
to be observant, vigilant, and live at all times. Secondly, when you decide to take up an act to initiate, plenty of homework in the form of reading about the issue, holding intentful conversation would help a long way in clarifying our thoughts. And once you have prepared yourself to take up an initiative, do not wait. It's very important that there should be no delay. And it is equally important that you do not give up. Just because your devil mind has thrown up some doubts or your partner friends have dozed off midway. A celebrated author has beautifully said that ideas, not dollars, are the currency of the 21st century. So dear friends, if you believe in this classic age-old saying that little initiatives make big difference and want to prove it, then just jump. Pluck an idea from somewhere, from the space or from your mind and give it a go. Thank you.